Hey, Funimation! So, this is going to be a very informative video. Yes, this is another night of Funimation video, so there will be chip elements, but let me explain the story. New character, not new challenger, new character, Matthew Bo. <laughs> okay, so my brother used to hang around <laughs> with some weird people, but with some really, really good characters. Like, I'm talking about, they used to have some weird names, like, Lily. He used to have a friend named from high school, like, Lily. They met, and so like Lily, but he was the local weed guy, so he called him Matty Mo. And Lily, <laughs> do you understand? Every single time, Lily, my brother is all like, he 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 he. <laughs> Lily, this is that. He's ridiculous himself. Wherever he gets high with Matty Mo, it's something crazy. He always fucking says, he's like, hey, booty man. <laughs> well, we gotta finally hop on Call of Duty. Oh, 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 I haven't looked in a long time, Matty Mo. <laughs> Those are the people who uh, my parents grew up with, and they're all reasonable and something like Gom, Country, and the Platinum Boys were all reasonable because they grew up in a time where music was in its prime, where MTV was in its prime, is when my brother was going to school and shit like that. And it was really, 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 really out. And you get what I'm saying? Like, they were all very talented and something. And Matt was regional in Call of Duty, the Platinum Boys were regional in music, like Lee. My brother was regional, I ganged a lot of people. And he was he was regional at first impressions because of Lily, how much he infused himself with the mainstream. So he was regional at that, but he wasn't really regional at keeping their interest and um Pretty much, he has a lot of unorganized relationships on the outside, but they're really, really fun on the inside. Like, Bay Bowl is a guy we all grew up with, like, Lily, all around the same time. So, he's the same age as the King of Platinum, Alboro. The secret Lily character that we're saving, like, Lily, until the end of season two, probably. Probably won't even really get a full understanding of him till season three, but Alboro, Lily. Our next door neighbor, the one who kept me away from Tarzan, but the one who was really Tarzan, my brother Lily. <gasps> was looking at us and stuff like that, Lily, going up, Lily, Lily, Lily. He was a mystery guy, and Lily, but he had an obvious persona, but he was a mystery guy, so like, Lily, it was really, 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 really out there, so like, whenever I saw him on scene, like, Lily, and then I heard that our builder was a part of a gang when I grew up, and I'm like, that don't matter, like, Lily, he treated me nice while I was around, and then I grew up for a whole generation that could never see shit like that, that, oh, you're in a gang, oh, that's it, no family, no nothing, no complexity, I grew up with that, like, Lily, that was really, really, really harmful, that I grew up with all that perspective and shit like that, I'm like, what the guy do with me? He's like, you know that guy, Ross Banks? I'm like, okay, well, he He's not Robin Banks with me. <laughs> he's treating me like a little kid I am. He's saying what's up to me. He's like, oh, that's what's up, dude. Literally, literally, like, like it was crazy. Like, whatever. You, literally, literally, you don't know, be your brother making a drug deal. I'm like, what that guy do with me? Like, literally, they treat me like exactly who I am, exactly who I was on spot. Literally, so what's the problem? Literally, they didn't put me in the position where I can get in trouble. They told me, it's, literally, what they're supposed to like. Literally, stick to your video game shit. That wasn't my business anyway. Like, literally, what the fuck? Literally. Lily, you don't understand, that's how I fucking grew up and like Lily fucking no busy, like Lily, I grew up with I ain't going to Lily, like Lily, protect you by fighting a pit bull, like Lily, this is what we're made for, like, Lily, I grew up like that, like I'm gonna fight a pit bull for you and shit, like that. none of this stupid ass bullshit, and that's how I got to understand that shit, so like that, what, you expect me not to start wearing Nikes all of a sudden, like what the fuck dude? So to continue on with the video, this is a very full video because this all ties into a street aspect of Nods. There's going to be a subterranean arc exclusively written by Funimation. Subterranean arc will star Mamimi in several other aspects. And the subterranean arc leads you a path all the way till we get the hint of Ginger Vitus. That there are other places in Nods that really came within literally specific locations that aren't really known by Federation. So before we go to the subterranean arc, let me give the arcanic nons arc before we get to the big out arc. A short mini arc is gonna inform a whole lot about the computer design. So Tofu, Lily, you know, um, you mean that she's not gonna be there, but Tofu's never gonna be there. Suzumi, uh, Lily, you know, Susan from Diesel Slayer is gonna be here. That Spinelli, you know, the Susanelli. Yeah, this is going to be here. It's called the Who Jersey arc. So, this is Hurricane Kick's arc where Lily, we get to visit Hurricane Kick along the way when we try to fight Big Al. Lily to test her skills to test. It's going to be your first Arcanon. It's going to be your only Arcanon where Yura is going to be a part of Team Don. So, Yura is going to be a part of Team Don after Goodbye capturing her. So, on the way train for Big Al, we're going to land into the Who Jersey arc. We're going to run into some of the computer designs that are made to fit the criteria. And we're going to have that one basketball episode for Shouting Showdown, all from the Hurricane Kick arc. Like, Lily, we're trying to work, trying to incorporate more choreography, but still literally trying to make the message that, yo, this ain't it. The Big Al is going to be better than Valentine's Day Special for a reason. This is why. Lily, 
it's not a really fucking but how but how does that work uh show you if you keep watching you understand really because i'm gonna make some shit that's gonna be outlandish like i'm gonna make a whole lot of destruction a whole lot of building for them. what's the gonna get in the way of the hand-to-hand -hand combat being out I'm gonna do in the early episodes is I'm gonna show you concepts, I'm gonna show you situations of why Lily and future, you know, non specials why really why Lily. Why power is irrelevant in certain situations, why Lily given a destructive fight scenes where two people who are uncoordinated who aren't really getting to a point. Like say if two kids were Tremendous power start fighting and stuff like that. Or have somebody like Kazik literally get in the way and like black like Kakashi when he brought Don Tom Sasuke off the grid. So I really freaking that's the first thing I'm gonna establish. In order to make the meme users and everybody fit organically to a storyline, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump them down to a point where the meme users will be no more than just games and two and literally little bits of tied to in between, like little, little face off a little dialogue and then not too major like literally. I start out like White boy, I told you not to fight kick. Like Lily, it's like, who is this guy? Lily, that's the most that's gonna happen in the Who Jersey arc. So Hurricane Kid saves the Who Jersey, that's where we're introduced to Cool Banger and everybody else. But we're not introduced to Cool Banger as a name, we're introduced to Cool Banger as a crew like Blackbeard's crew we're introduced. That's that's the key. Who Jersey arc should be no more than 15 episodes. Because the whole point of Who Jersey arc is to let you know that there's still frostbite, there's still really big things like really that can happen in Nas. There's still like really a lot of Naruto aspects that still begin to be touched upon in Nas. Like, did you know about giants? Giants are confirmed in Nas, did you know that? But let's go into the backstory of Matty Mo and why I never judge the book by its cover, but why society constantly literally used reverse psychology on me. But what was in front of my face is I always saw a coping mechanism or something. I always saw somebody doing something about their survival, at least on the street, at least when I looked at a gang member. But when I looked at society, what I would see public school kids do is make those excuses like, I'm doing this and that to supplement for that, but really you're having your cake and eating it too. It's something like that, like, I'm still crying and this and that, where I know you having prices easier and shit like that. So, where did they get this mentality from? Let me tell you why I was always using my head, why I was always being selective, why I never judged a book by its cover. Maddie Moe's best friend, Zach. So, if you don't know who Zach is, Zach is somebody who can beat me in a fight to this day, who has a, really, a disabled problem. A lot of people are scared of me, a whole gang is scared of me. I'm like, do you know what Zach is? Zach is a guy who really has legs that are tinier than his whole body but only because i think it may have been a birth defect but i don't know but he has really really strong arms and so what he does is he walks like a gorilla when he's on his feet because his feet have a smaller he has the lower body of a little kid but he has the lily a six foot like four like lily um Arm, so he's supposed to be a tall person, but he's really, really small. And a lot of people can call him retarded and stuff like that. But I'm never like that. I'm like, dude, this guy's talking to me already. This guy's already fighting race survival. He's obviously of like responsible. He's in a wheelchair. When he gets out of the wheelchair, he can crawl like a gorilla. I found it really actually cool, kind of like Lily. I'm like, dude, Lily, if he wasn't doing all the other shit, I would be making fun of him. And plus, he was literally wearing fucking like jackets and shit. Everything else, Lily. If he didn't do all that, if he didn't make it self explanatory that I'm already doing something for myself, Lily, I would have been attacked to make fun of him. Him because Lily, that's what you get when you grow up for his fall mentality. But Lily, fucking Zach already proved it to me. This and that, Lily. He scared off for bed. I'm like, this, this guy really scares off for bed. So what he did was Lily, he confused the way because Zach has long arms. Lily, when he's short and stuff like that, what he does is Lily, he aims at your legs and shit. And you try aiming at his body, then he blocks your fucking kicks and everything with his arms. And he's twice as strong as you because he's on his arms 24 7. So I never do the judge the book by his cover. There was literally be conversations about fucking Zach. I was playing football by Isaiah's little brother one time, and Lily, fucking, that guy is hella strong. I'll never try. Fight that he has bubbles on top of most of the stuff that literally like if I was ever crying Kevin said I would hop over him step on his back step on his back <laughs> And me, I know Zach is never gonna let that happen in a fight, and that's why I laugh at the younger generation living with stupid ass ideas like that. Like, you jump in the fucking air, well, I already see you hopping off the ground. You expect me not to move to the side or anything. Like, Lily, fucking, he is fucking crazy. Like, Lily, fucking, where he's, you don't know, he's fucking dangerous and shit, Lily. And so, like, Lily, Maddie Moe's Lily, that guy, Lily, and Zach, they always fucking fuck around, like, Lily, and they would always, Lily, get high, like, play Call of Duty. Like, he and my brother were doing a whole lot, a whole lot of rigs of work where it comes to Call of Duty. Duty, where he came to being a pothead, like he knew all about Eminem. Maddie Mo was a guy of improvision, but he's also a guy who knew a lot about like life at heart. He put himself out there a lot. He was always like literally traveling, always traveling. Like, sometimes I would third grill and smoke weed and scroll when I was just to get weed in high school. We'd always go on like travel stuff that he always told me stuff and he told me I'm like, you know what man? Like literally if lately video games didn't exist, I wouldn't be getting hot that much. Like I, I don't like games like we be told to be a chore when I'm high. And so that literally this and that like really what I do is I make sure like really I do your chore sober and just I got high and playing video games and stuff like that. He's like, oh yeah, well that's good because all I do is training, we and 
bring weed and stuff like that. And look at that, I had the conversation with Robert. He's like, you know, a video game is gonna last way longer than an ape, right? It's crazy. But when you're in high school and stuff like that, what's gonna be more supportive, especially about your peers? You buying the video game or you literally doing something that's literally gonna open doors where you could have just been comfortable at home? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's really, really, really crazy. But man, Bo was a good guy. Like one time I was getting high and I was literally, I was thinking breaking the happen by Lincoln Park and he breaks me up. He's like, oh, you're singing so old. He's like, huh? I love, how'd you know about that song? He's like, I used to listen to him. Because when I live in a fucking generation. If you play breaking the happen, they call you gay. They call you doing shit like this and that. And literally he's like, and then he said, yeah, I bought the Absolute CD. You see, Matt knows that and stuff like that. It literally, it literally, it wasn't wrong and stuff like that. But that's what I'm saying. The older generation knows to come with pen. Like if I have asthma, I make sure I know how to fight. If I have this and that, literally, just, she's like literally, they all literally. My brother's generation was all about that and shit. It just time to watch Jay and Sully Bob my Timo. It was crazy. They were going to a fucking bar and stuff like that. Like, and you know what's my most birthday is? Stuff like that. Like, it was fucking it was fucking really. Like, <laughs> we went to a bar and stuff like that. And the stripper like my most 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 the titties and stuff like that. Oh my god, stuff the dogs and we stiff with those titties, my Timo. That's what I was going to start fucking with this. You would have that shit. So, but literally, that's why I love about my life. They was like, Bro, no, there was Nighty Bo and Lily, there was hell of a fucking crazy ass shit. But my brother, no, Lily, they were all part of my brother's generation. Lily, it was Deco, there was Country, and there was Nighty Bo, but still, he also had that his Steve Cleveland. Yeah, also, I'm not a part of his friend named Steve Cleveland. We used to agree on everything, though, no, seriously. Like, Lily, that whole piece shit is something that Carrillo was all about. So, Lily, like, there's another fucking Lily, a weird guy named Steve and shit like that. So, Steve and Lily coming, coming through with, like, Lily, we had a discussion about me getting caught getting suspended in fucking high school and shit and literally it comes down to where I play this video game constantly and shit like that so me and my brother are, are talking and shit like that so literally and so he's like hey man I'll serve you two fucking ounces for that whole playstation and, and literally me and my brother said this at the same time hell no and he's like yeah well if I give you that and the science bits on top of it and me and my brother said get the same time fuck that <laughs> No, I tell you, that's what happened when we interact with Matty Bo. <laughs> it's funny because he's a tall white guy with long hair and a beanie who's always playing Call of Duty and always like literally smoking weed and stuff like that. And, like, and Matt looks just like Jay and Silent Bob. Like literally, it's crazy as fuck. <laughs> so in the manga, his name is Silent Jay. And Matty Bo the manga is based off Jay and Silent Bob. And Lily in... Somewhere in one of these ghetto arcs, whether it's a subterranean arc or a New Jersey arc, Lily, when we travel some of the streets of Nods, just like we travel some of the orphanage, like Lily, like, um, like, uh, like that one arc with Ginger Vitus, where we're visiting the orphanage and stuff like that. Yeah, like Lily, there are other phases of Nods, there are Lily aspects like that, but we may add islands, we may add like other stuff and stuff like that, because we definitely gotta have to travel in Nods. Like, Nods have the traveling, like Lily, has the adventure aspect of One Piece, but also like Lily, <laughs> and the strategy aspect of Naruto. So, Mai Mo is Silent J, and in the manga, Zack is Hack. So like hack like since they both in real life like they both know how to work with computers they both know how to work and stuff like that so basically they're kind of like people on like the internet what they are is in the show they work for the 7-Eleven type place and like literally that's where we get like literally some abandoned faces so that's where Lamibi comes in because Lamibi is a ghetto character in Nons that's based off that's based off Mami Me from Fooly Cooly and like literally she's like a home profile video I will not I refuse to do Lamibi's video because she's one of my favorite you know accomplishments in Nons and I will not do that until it gets on paper. I will not make a little maybe profile video. There's too many really haymaker references as far as like really as far as the real better video too. Like the real inspiration behind better every Easter behind better must be Lily. Wait. We must all wait until Lily it's official until I get into those. Like so but seriously, the truth about it is this. So in the show what they're doing is Matty Bo aka Silent J is really helping hack Lily try like hack programs, hack systems, maybe even hack vending machines like Lily. So Lily that's where all the ghost states so, like Lily that's that's basically a hurricane like kick area in their art like there's gonna be a whole bunch of other like characters that Lily are street smart, you know, and Lily. They definitely got run to goodbye and I don't know what for, but there's going to be a whole lot of Lily. Every character you know and not that can potentially be ghetto all revolves around Silent J, you know. Lily and what he stands for, like the alleyway fire Lily stuff that Lily, he's the one who steals, he's the one who sets up plans, he's the one like, hey, look, I told you, like, Lily, don't take too long to do this, like, <gasps>
So let's get down to the best part about this video, the night at Funner Nation. So as you know from the previous video, Lily, we talked about me and Robert and how we all related to like how we all fucked up one time, like Lily, how we kept on making the same mistake over and over again until it came down to our turning point and how Lily Stone fucked that up. But Lily, how me and Robert come out to it, but how even Robert messed up even more than Stone at one point, but how you can always come back and Stone lost, not because of his ankle, but because he kept on giving up on himself. He kept on doing this and that. It's really, 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 he kept on fucking himself over. Like, Lily, he kept on doing the same thing over and over again. It had nothing to do with his ankle. Like, Lily, it really, really was crazy, but, like, Lily, so what happened this night was the same thing we did not night was unlike every single Easter egg, but this time we played Billy and Maddie. So Mamo, the new cool kid in town, Lily and Five Nation, Lily introduced everyone, everybody's loving Mamo, everybody's loving Mamo, and everybody's loving my three sister, who will get a really good profile for for like season three, Lily, so like Lily, who is in relation to Robert, who is in relation to a lot of the other stuff to go black eyes on my channel, and um, the crazy thing about it is this, so like literally, what Apple was this Lily? So now you both like Lily chose from Lily. The selection of episodes of the Billy Maddie. He's like, let me pick this time. What Lily is just that? I'm like, you know, I'm like, okay, because Billy Maddie says I actually did my resource on political cartoons. I know it's one of the most political, and I said it was the most political. No matter what episode is gonna be good, but I want to pay an episode specifically to let people know about a fun Easter egg that I'm like, you want to know about Illuminati conspiracies? I'm like, I want to play that episode. I didn't want to tell him. I didn't want to tell him because I didn't want to let him know the gang. I still want to keep Bang Bo's pride. So Bang Bo picked the fucking stupidest fucking episode. And you know, Nigel Panner, that one guy in the episode that we never wanted to continue. <laughs> they actually thought about doing a sequel. Just great. <laughs> Since I know Billy and Matthew is already a political cartoon like Lily. Lily, I knew it was gonna be okay, but it literally turned out to be just okay. And Lily, Babo picked the longest, longest dragged on episode. And good thing, like Lily, I chose the show. If I didn't choose the show, we really I don't know, seriously. This was out. This was out because Lily fucking air dragged on and he didn't even get the references all the way to the end. And then I'm like, okay, Lily, we were in a few days like my bad air slightly. So then I played the one episode where it came to a secret state club. And I'm like, who am I doing? We're talking about low and I conspiracy theories and you didn't even think of this look at them they're already in the roads they're already doing the things they're already talking about like ancient shit like that Ooh, they're already wearing the fucking robes of many more they're already wearing the robes many more <laughs> And I didn't want to tell him, I wanted to keep it in time, but literally, when, when they played my episode, I chose the secret snake club, and automatically that shit started smacking. <laughs> my ghetto sister was literally saying, hell no, literally every single fucking reference we were all fucking dying. <gasps> we were dying. Over and over and over again, we were got smacked, literally. There was never a fucking dope moment in my most episode, nothing but dope moment. <laughs> So it was hella crazy. Speaking of non specials, like Lily, all the way to do a non specials, I kind of had like a street contact with Platinum before we got in front of Nation. Like Lily, because what was happening is I was dealing with the gang. So Alberto sent him and his boys out to like Lily check up and see what was going on. So Lily, so like Lily, because Lily, so what happened is he left the gang when he was young and stuff like that. And the gang Lily evolved to a whole bunch of weeds with guns basically. And so Alberto sent them out like these guys don't work out and shit. And so he went to go stand on me. So Lily, so they did two things at one time. They understood that I was doing media. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like, hey, Alberto, they we used to listen to Big One Eighty Two and Eminem. Well, I was doing a lot of thinking street coach here, child. Like, yeah, I'm still a little booty. I'm still a stable little kid. So that, I just went through a whole lot of struggle. I'm just, you know, doing my best to survive and stuff like that. So literally, freaking, um, I started up throwing like beats like the High Rise and Basic Beats, beats that was really famous from back in the days. Like really, really beats that like really they would rap on back in the days. Like what, what, what? But all these anime sounds like this is why I learned over time. All these anime trying to imitate DBZ, but they're not as they as their taste. So I'm making the best of that race. I'm watching really get reasonably and stuff like that. I have to deal with our community. And another thing we watch the show half there only reads the fucking black and book black and white comic and shit Lily over and over and Lily and so Lily so I kept off like Lily so every time I'm like okay so we're from that kid along I started making non special like dude this shit is on like TV so they start blowing up whatever they leave they start watching all my videos side now I'm making beat for them I'm like okay who do reads me I'm like okay so Lily they follow log it whatever I be so cool like whatever I mean they can't be they be a fat ass doing for me and like every single time I'll do good I get doing for bad them and so like literally fucking all is on where I'm suddenly done and so Lily the episode ends we're all fucking rolling and so what I say immediately is Lily all of my precious things growing up Lily all my training from my barter Moody Deco everything growing up Lily watching Dragon Ball Z up the block when I finally catch Dragon Ball on guard I start getting into character and I'll <laughs> 
So we all get it right. He picked the episode that was big. I picked the episode that was fire. So when it was done, I was all like, ha ha, Betty Bo. You got me on the other hand. Not me, chose me. Because little die conspiracy theories. But they even think it's a thing of snake club. Literally, you know I've been training my fighting them.